I'm back. First of all, have a great Christmas and a happy new year. It'll be around soon, so I just thought I'd say that. But uh, yeah, well, what's the video about? Well, a lot of guys will know that I'm currently working on making this. Yeah, that's the uh, scratch plate I decided on. How very nice it is too. But the video is not actually about the guitar itself. It's about one of the components that I'm going to be fitting that is of the highest quality. And it's not an ordinary component either. It's been honed and worked on uh, by a company called Halon Guitar Parts. And there's a guy in there named Harris who's absolutely, along with his, his partner, absolutely focused on uh, materials for this particular project. Well, what's a project? Well, here it is. It comes in this fabulous little <laughs> wooden box. And it really is fabulous. It must have cost the earth to make one of them. But there you go. That's the way this company is. High quality. In fact, the highest quality. Yeah, and I've bought some of these things over the years. Oh, Tony, what is it? <laughs> Well, let me give you a clue. Oh, no, the box, that tells you nothing. Here it is. It's one of these things. That's right. It's a tremolo unit, but not any old tremolo unit. You know, you can buy them ten a penny, the cheap stuff. You know, that, that zinc poured into the moulds. and You know what I mean. And, you know, you can go to people like Callahan and buy... Uh, steel blocks and Callahan is a pretty good company however it's not as good as this one <laughs> this is another level and uh, I was introduced to this by a fellow on YouTube funnily enough and uh, James and he said to me he said he's an American he said Tony you need to <laughs> you need to uh, Speak to Halo and Guitar Parts. They've got this tremolo. So, sure enough, I did. And I, I spoke to uh, Harris. And Harris arranged, after I paid him, that is. But nothing, nothing's for free. I, I don't work that way. After I paid him, here it is. It's arrived. And we're going to take a closer look and go into a bit of depth about this. In a little review now. And then... Uh, when we get to building the guitar, you're going to see the tremolo a lot more because what I'm going to be do doing is uh, fitting different saddles that change the tone of the guitar. And it's one of the areas that Heilong Guitar Parts is really, really focused on. They know more about that than I'll ever know. Anyway, let's go and have a look a bit closer at the, the sort of quality of this, uh, this tremolo unit. And I think you'll be impressed because I can tell you, I've seen loads of them. And I am impressed. This is a cut above the, the rest. Let's get a bit closer and start having a look what we got. Well, as you can see from the box, it's a fantastic presentation box and it's solid wood. Believe it or not, fabulous stuff. You just don't see gear coming in like this, do you? In this, presented in this way. We'll talk about the steels in a moment. This is a sort of uh, tremolo arm itself. And it's not your run-of-the-mill uh, material. But we'll come back to the materials in a little bit. This is the basic tram. It's heavy. And at first sight, you could be excused for assuming that, well, it's like all the other trams out there. But, of course, that's not the case uh, this is, this is manufactured of very specific materials by Halen. This block, I don't know if you can see that, let's have a look. Uh, it's 1060 steel. It says Mexican here, but what that really means is this is a narrow gauge. Uh, it's a vintage tremolo, vintage diameter tremolo that fits the guitar I'm making. So it's as simple as that. It really is heavy as well. You know, when you see quality like this, when you see this stuff around like this, you know, you can start to appreciate that 
actually, get that box out of the way, that actually it's all extremely high quality and not like at all what you see from many other companies, including the ones, you know, the components that fitted Defender as standard. You know, this is a Stratocaster bridge. Uh, but they also make uh, components for Telecasters and for Les Pauls as well. Uh, so, you know, if, you, if you're a Tonown type of guy, you should be taking a look at the website. Yeah, which is down there now on the bottom of the screen. Uh, and that's hailonguitarparts.com. Yeah, an interesting place to go and have a look. Back in 2010, Halon started designing their own musical instrument building tools. And they raised the bar building electric guitars and parts. But the initial goal was to build handmade quality parts, giving extra care to the sound quality. Having seen several other part manufacturers focusing on the aesthetics, or how it looks, we wanted to cover the gap, uh, they said, and they offer a line of guitars and parts built by musicians for musicians, and that's always the best thing. Having, you know, decent uh, equipment made by people who know what they're talking about. But on their site, you find bridges that can take your guitar, it will take your guitar to another level. Uh, I don't know anybody else who worldwide is offering the range and quality of that series of uh, components, really. Uh, it's just, i just got to keep touching this as well. It, I don't know why, but it, it's one of them parts that you want to pick up. <laughs> In any case, they use uh, non-leaded, annealed, cold-rolled 1060 steel, uh, which is two times harder than the 1018, which gives a great, uh, the best vibration transfer, really, making any guitar responsive. It's, it's just better. They also use uh, things like aluminium, uh, which is like an annealed 7075 aluminium. This top-notch aircraft grade aluminium. And for brass, yeah, believe it or not, they use brass too. Uh, they use MS58, and uh, they still experiment with that, and they've got titanium these days, and beryllium, and some other stuff that I'm going to talk about in a little short while. As you can imagine, there's not much to look at as such. I mean, I, I did want to show you this, but I also want to talk about all the things in this because when we get to building the guitar I'll talk less about that and more about you know setting it up and things like that. Now what uh, Halon sent me uh, was uh, a set of 7075 aluminium saddles uh, apart from the steel 1060 steel ones and MS58 brass and we'll be trying those uh, as we go. There's a whole pile of bits and pieces here. We'll have a look at those in a moment. But the materials are the, the, the real key to it and uh, that's what I think. And when we built the guitar we're going to change out these a couple of times so you can hear the differences. Well hopefully you can on YouTube. You know YouTube's not always the best place to hear uh, nuances of you know tone. Uh, unfortunately that's the way it is with compression. Now, among other things, the tremolo arm, well, it's got a screw on the end. It looks pretty normal. In, in reality, it's less than normal. And it, it sort of just pushes in. You see that? See that? And then you just twirl it a couple of times. And you've got a really, really strong uh, direct connection between this and this. You know, you know what these things are like on strats, don't you? They're falling around and flopping around and falling out. Or you've got the other type with the plastic bushes that usually end up being pretty bloody rubbish. But this thing's a bit different. It's really a real good fit. And uh, that's about it. You don't need to do anything else to that at all. Indeed, there's nothing to do. It's just a couple of three turns and it's absolutely, this is absolutely solid. That's nice. And uh, yeah, I like that. That's a, a powerful feature for me. You know when you're recording, I mean, you can see, well, you see how tight that is. It's a good fit. But when you're recording in the studio, as I do, uh, if I'm doing any real uh, recording, as opposed to messing around, <laughs> which is what I do a lot of on YouTube and stuff like that. But when I'm doing any real recording, 
I've had Stratocaster arms drop down and go dink on the end of the, uh, the you know the cable that comes out and goes off to your to your amp or to whatever interface you're using, and then it ends up on the track. <laughs> A right pain. You won't get any of that with this. I can tell you, this is really really solid. In fact, I'm not sure if you can see this. If you look very carefully there, you can see that it just rubs on the body, uh, which is good because that's a, a, a slight interference fit and it makes this thing, you know, better than your average. Hey, while well, we're down here, I want to look at this a bit further. Look at this. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. Oh, I've got my fingerprints all over it, but don't let that worry you. Really, really uh, nice bridge. It weighs a ton. <laughs> In case I haven't said that, but I, I think I did. <laughs> now, one of the things about the Strat Bridge, you might not know this, but originally when Leo designed this thing, he made it out of steel. Well, there's nothing unusual about that, is there? Great machining. Uh, no, there's nothing unusual about it, except in about 1964, he started to use zinc. You know, that cheap, nasty uh, material. Uh, it's just about the worst material you could use, but I reckon, uh, you know, for something like that there. And then they, what they did, well, even later on, you, you go and have a look at one, you'll find it's half as thick as this. So it's zinc which is light, and then it's half as thick again, which is even lighter. And it really doesn't, uh, it doesn't really complement what Leo had in mind originally. I'm pretty sure of that. You know, you're going to lose the sustain, uh, the harmonics, and all the nice things that this thing passes on <laughs> and allows, you know, the strings to vibrate longer and that sort of thing. It's a very important component. There's no question in my mind. None. So what Halon did, basically, is to bring back, in effect, what Leo Fender sort of had in mind from the outset. Yeah. And that's a good statement to make. Halon went one step further by using steel, aluminium and brass. And that takes the, uh, the tremolo up another level, or two, or three. In fact, to areas that you wouldn't think. So let's take a, a quick run through of what's in front of us here. This top plate, for example, and it's a good example. It's got some significant alter alterations that, that Halon did, or carried out. And they think that these are improvements and they probably are. Most commercial top plates are built from sheet metal plates. Quick bend, job done. The width of the product though is reduced and it inherently has stress points. Most of the top plates in the market are about 2mm. This one's nearly 3mm at 2.8mm and that increases the harmonics, the depth and the sustain from this tram oil. You, you look at it, you don't really notice but there it is, right in front of you. And of course they did far more than just change the thickness of that plate. The plate's one thing, but then you come to the saddles. And the saddles are a whole another, another story. A whole another story. These are beefier than the bent metal bits that were there originally. You've seen them, we've all seen them. It says fender and fender usually, or something like that. But what happens with those bent steel saddles is they have sympathetic vibration, uh, which is caused by the contact of the saddles down here. Yeah, so they gave space between the saddles, which also helps. Now looking at these components here, you can see that it's got a screw there so you can make a really good ground connection. Very good. Very useful, that. You know, when you're soldering the stuff, it, it, it never wants to stick to, uh, to a lot of the materials that are out there. So that's one little improvement. Then we've got these... Oh, they're coming for me again. 
Then we've got the springs, uh, not your average springs. We've got the screws that are also uh, stainless steel. In fact, everything here is stainless steel, except for them, I think. I think these are not. Who knows? I can't be sure. The tremolo arm is also stainless steel. And in, inside there, you've got a, a sort of little nylon bushing down inside that you'll probably never need to even go and look at, but, but it's there. I'm using stainless steel. Uh, there's a lot of things about it. You aren't easily going to bend that. You're definitely not going to break it. Uh, so these claws here, it's all stainless steel. It's all the good stuff. Uh, yeah, no corrosion, no nothing. It's all good. Now, as I've said, uh, Halon have really quite a number of materials uh, for these saddles. And uh, they don't do that just to, to look good or, you know, try and be flashy. There's a reason for everything. And uh, that's important. If you take a look at the brass saddles, let's just flip these out. Or at least one of them. One will do one. Oh, I've got two. Why not? <laughs> you can see yourself. I mean... It's absolutely top class, that is. Finishes nylon perfect. And it's it's brass, which adds to the sound colour. It offers it more sustain, clarity, and an audible warmth and sweetness. Halon say the, the notes will sing more. Well, they seem to. Compression is also an addition to tone. It feels better in guitars. Uh, if you've got guitars with harsh sounds, Use this stuff, yeah, the brass. Works great with blues, rock and jazz. That's the thing about that stuff. Now I do believe the saddles that are fitted in here, uh, as I ordered them, uh, these will give you better clarity, better note separation, harmonics, a tight sound. The best definition for a Strat sound in fact. The definition very important you can use it for rock blues funk hard rock metal well almost anything and uh, there's not much to say about them really except that the type of steel they're using is absolutely top end now i have got some more saddles here which i think uh, i think these are aluminium it's hard to tell he didn't actually uh, mark them up which is a bit of a pity but i'll be back to them and uh, i'll ask them exactly which ones I have because the number of types of these things and I think these are aluminium anyway but in the case of aluminium which clearly they do make these will give you clarity and definition of steel very similarly but they've got a more open twangy and woody type of sound uh, it's amazing especially in the twang that can give in uh, that can give even in those strats that don't have the character if you know what I mean uh, you know what I mean by strats. There's a massive variance in uh, the actual tone that you get out of the damn things, uh, whether it's the pickups or whatever. But these things uh, are major contributors. So the aluminium uh, can help with the, the twangy and woody sound that you might be after. Especially, uh, you know, uh, when I think about uh, a neck pickup, you know, that woody tone from that. Yeah. Funk and rock, they say, for this stuff. Now, I'd be careful I say that. Funk and rock. <laughs> to keep things straightforward. Now, when I spoke to Harris about these uh, these things, this is another one, by the way. So I've got to, to review. Those are going back. Uh, he was telling me uh, he sent a set of 7075 aluminium saddles, apart from the 1060 steel, and the MS58 brass, which you've seen. Uh, in case I wanted to try them, which I do. Uh, they've got aluminium 7075, which gives a very nice articulate and snappy sound, uh, which they like. And Harris himself said, oh, you like that one, you know. He found the aluminium 7075 gave a nice articulate and snappy sound, which he liked. And that's one of the reasons why he sent Okay, well, lastly down here, I'm just going to talk about the saddles again. Uh, 
and the build of the, the product and the type of materials that they've got. And uh, let's just cover it again. The block and the plate can be made of 1060 steel, 7075 aluminium or MS58 brass. So you can have combinations of that as well if you want. So they can custom, uh, customise for you. It's all on the side. But when it comes back to the saddles, they've got more materials than you and I can shake a stick at. And they have very good reason for that because that's probably a long way towards the uh, enhancement of the tone as you might want it, if you get me. So let's look at the saddles. And I've talked about 1060 steel, 7075 aluminium, MS58 brass. We talked about those things, but what I didn't talk about is the fact that they can make them out of titanium, beryllium copper, or phosphor bronze. Now, if you ask me what each one of those types of material will change, how it will change the bridge, I can't answer it. You need to go to the website, you know, uh, heylonguitarparts.com and have a look because it's all very, very interesting stuff. And Harris, the man there, uh, and his partner, they both are very, very uh, well educated in what they do. Let's put it that way. I'm back. <laughs> Up top, that is. Well, you get all the components, make no mistake of that. Uh, you can choose your colour of the bits on the end of the trim and all the sort of things that you might want to do. But the important thing is this selection of materials that you're going to make your trim out of. They've got a number of standard ones, like I said, on the website. And, you know, I, I want it to stay pretty standard because a lot of guys will do that. But if you're one of them tone-down types, I mean, I'm a rock guitarist, but them tone-down type, the guys, you know, they've got bat ears, they can hear everything. Me, on the other hand, well, mine are on the way out, but don't hold it against me. So there you have it. Well, what about cost? I mean, that's always a thing, isn't it? When you, you know, we're building a guitar, really, and this is a, a forerunner to the, to the guitar build. And that money can add up, uh, honestly, pretty quickly. Well, this thing, depending on how you custom it, or how you order it, uh, can go from anywhere between approximately two to three hundred dollars. So it's not a cheap bottom end thing. No, it isn't. It never was meant to be. And secondly, I don't make guitars that are cheap bottom end things. I only make guitars that are really uh, up there, not down there. You want down there? The cheap Chinese junk will work for you. It doesn't work for me. This wouldn't work for you either if you're happy. Uh, using junk parts. It's that simple. So what can I say? Well, how would I score it so far? Well, for quality, I haven't heard it yet, but we're going to on the next video. But for quality, this is a 10 out of 10 all day. Uh, there's no question at all about that. It's beyond uh, being criticised, really. It's perfect. <laughs> and uh, thankfully they sent, they sent these other saddles and we'll be having a good look at them when we get to the guitar actual review and uh, playtime. Uh, I'm prepared to go and do that. So. And uh, then we'll go forward from there. That sounds like a plan. So that's it for now. It's a 10 out of 10 on quality. There's no messing around with any of that. I'm going to pull this away and uh, next time you see this it will be being fitted to that, uh, that guitar that's sort of over there somewhere. Now, I might have put you a few pictures up as we were going through, up there, so to speak, uh, of close-ups of various components and stuff like that. All very interesting stuff, especially on a tremolo uh, like this one is. It's a bit like uh, some of the others that I've looked at very closely and used over the years. But uh, I like this one because it's something different. And uh, it's not something I've seen anybody else doing. And I've been around a while, look at me. <laughs> so, that's it for now. Don't forget to go to Hale on Guitar Parts. There they are down there. Might be a bit in the text also. Uh, on my own website, of course, TonyMcKenzie.com. Will I get it on there? Who knows? <laughs> Time and a load of other factors don't always allow me to do that. But uh, anyway, there it is for now. I'll get out of here. <laughs>